looking through this um this sort of like state setup that we have it's it's getting a little bit cumbersome we can imagine that if we start hand, if we have like a larger form with maybe many text fields and we're using a separate use state for every single one of them that could be a little bit uh, unwieldy so there is a way for us to use state just one use state to store all this different data. And we could, instead of just storing primitives inside of it, or you know, a string in this case and a number in this case, what if we um what if we store a struct or an enum, in this case a struct that holds all of these things for us? Let's go ahead and set that up. So we're gonna have a struct. Um let's just name this um like it's our data. Uh, now, in this case, it's not necessarily the best example because I just have a click tracker and a username. They're not really related to each other. Normally, however, your components would be related to each other and it would make sense to like then name it after whatever it is, like uh, account information, if it's like username, password, and you know, age and whatnot, whatnot. Okay, so in this case, we're gonna have our pub username. Um, you're going to be a string and we're going to have our pub count, which is going to be a U32. So uh, when we're creating this, uh, we're going to call this just state now. Uh, okay, so you use state, initialize function. Let's, um, these both can have defaults implemented for them. So let's just derive default and then I can have you return a data default. So that will be an empty string for username and a zero for count. Okay, so that gives us our state. Um, we don't need this button count state anymore. Um, okay, so we need to clone the state. Well, this can now just be clone state equals our uh, state dot clone. We're going to move that into the username change. So this doesn't change. We still need a callback to hand, you know, for each uh, change, each uh, event that happens. We're going to take in the username and well, we can't really set this anymore, can we? Uh, we now need to first get the uh, the entire data out of it, and then we can set the username. Um, now we can potentially put some functions, but let's first like look how we have to do this manually. So let our data is going to be equal to uh, our clone state, and I want to dereference this. That gives us data. Uh, we'd want this to be mutable. Now we can update this. So I want data.username. And uh, we want to set that equal to the username. And then we want the clone state. And we're going to set with the data. I mean, it's not too terribly bad. We extract out, we get a copy of the data. Uh, we can then set the username on it and then we can just set that. That that works. Uh, okay, so for the cloned button state, we can kind of do the same thing we did before except we can reuse the clone name and shadow that because this has been used up by this. Let's, let's do that again. So we're going to do a clone state equals this is just going to be a state.clone. Uh, our button clicked. Okay, so we do our callback function. Uh, we extract out the count. Um, well, we can't really extract out the count, can we? It's going to be, once again, data. We extract out the data. So this is going to be the clone state. Uh, we have to make this mutable. Now we can uh, do data.count plus equals to one, and then we're going to set this back again to data. 
and you're going to be the clone state. Okay, and then the display of this, uh, we want to display the username. So that's now going to be uh, state.username. Uh, I shouldn't need this deref anymore because when you do a dot inside of inside of something, it then auto dereferences for you. It sort of implies a dereference, uh, which makes things a lot nicer. So now here I can just do a state dot count, and I don't need to do anything special here. Okay, so what are you upset about? You cannot move out of dereference. Uh, because had type does not implement the copy trait. So this data. So let's see if we can implement copy and clone. Unfortunately, copy may not be implemented. I can clone it, but I can't copy it. I can't copy it because that would require copy types all up the chain, and unfortunately, the, the state itself can't be copied. So that means we have to clone these. Um, now can't be moved out of dereference. Uh, okay, so if I can't uh, move you out, I want like this mutable reference. Can I do something like I want a mutable reference of you? Yeah, I can. Now, does that mean this needs to be mutable here? Not exactly. Now, you're upset because mismatch types have so now this mutable reference. So now can I dereference you to get at the actual data? Uh, no, not necessarily. I need like a new version of it. Uh, so can I clone you? And I cannot borrow data in a dereference. So now I don't want to dereference you anymore. And like you just, we're just running into this problem over and over and over again. Uh, mismatch types found, uh, the expected, just the data found, a use state handle. So I want to dereference you. I uh, cannot assign to data to a dereference. So basically, this is just like running into these problems over and over and over again of like trying trying to like get access to this, to assign it to it. What we need to do is we need to like really get this data out here. So let's first see if we can deref before we clone. So if I use deref here and then I clone, that gives us this data. We set you to be mutable. We did a username, get the username. And then I want to just pass in the data again. And this works. So when we're, when we're, um, uh, when we're basically working on this, we need to make sure we do the deref at this point before we clone it. Otherwise, we've cloned the wrong thing. So let's implement the exact same change here. We're gonna not deref at this point, but we're going to deref here. Everything should be happy now. If we come back to our browser, everything is still working exactly as it should be. Uh, so let's sort of like review what, what we did. We're now using a single struct as our, our data source, as our, our state. Uh, we're then initializing that using default. And then inside of each of the callbacks, we have to deref to get the actual data out, and then we can clone it. Then we can mutate it and then reset it back again. This is very similar to what you have to do in, in Redux, where you have to like clone an object, uh, update it, and then reset it back to the state. 
Now, there are some things that we can do to make this a little bit nicer. It's possible to set some, an implementation on data, uh, add some functions to maybe make some of this a little bit nicer, maybe even something where we can pass in uh, a, a use state handle um, and like what the new thing should be. It'll do do everything we want and then like set it for us. Uh, that would just sort of be moving things around. Uh, we could possibly also um, just like pass in a new thing. It uh, derefs it, clones it and gives it back to us. And then we, we then set it from there. That would basically just move, that's moving lines of code from here to maybe somewhere else. Not necessarily a bad thing if it's making things a little bit easier to read, um, but I'm gonna leave that up to you to sort of decide which way makes the most sense for your codes. And then of course, we can now just deref access the, uh, the properties on this struct directly. Uh, so this is the second way of using use state to store state. Um, I go back and forth on which ones I prefer. For if there's like two, three or four or more things that I need to store in like one component, let's say like a view component or an organism like this, then I'm almost always going to use a struct. But if it's just one, maybe two, and they're not necessarily related to each other, I'm probably gonna use them separately as separate states. Uh, anyways, Thank you so much for watching and uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye.